Center of Colors for Earth, and we are live on Facebook and on YouTube simultaneously. So what we're going to do is give it a few minutes for people to join us. And, and we're going to check to make sure everything is live. So if you're on, please uh, comment, say hello, tell me where you're from. We will have a drawing at the end, so uh, we will pick from the comments. Okay, so I'm going to give it just a few minutes. We've got some people starting to come on. And I'm looking at a couple of monitors just to double check things. So say hello in the comments. Tell me where you're from. Tonight we're going to talk about uh, designers and how I got this uh, vase and flowers on the glass. Okay. Hey, Wendy. Hey, Lucy. Eddie. Hello. Hey, Nancy Nelson. Okay. So we've got people coming on and I'm going to check with Jenny to make sure we're live on Facebook and YouTube, I'm assuming. Are we good, Jenny? Okay, so we are good for both. Good evening, everyone. So if you were at the glass show with us, that was um, really exciting and nice to be around people again, uh, of course, with some precautions, but it was good to see old friends, make new friends, and uh, I did a couple of demonstrations up on the stage. I believe those are on their Facebook, or excuse me, on their website that you can watch those. It's stuff that I've already done pretty much in some of my lives or other videos, but if, if you want to see those, if you weren't able to attend or you weren't there for those um, actual broadcasts, you can find those on their website is what they told me. And I haven't went out there and found it yet. Uh, if we have time, maybe Jenny can pop out there. I just happened to think about it. So, but it was nice to see everyone. So, all right. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Debbie. Hey, Miss Kim Walker. How are you? Um, so tonight we're going to do the designers. I'm going to show you a couple of things that I've done. I've also got a, an enamel piece, just a small sample. I haven't had a chance to play with using the regular enamels with this technique yet, but I'll show you what I have done. Okay. All right. So we've got uh, quite a few people on. So what I'm going to do is change to my other camera. So give me just a second. We're going to do this. All right. And don't need to see me anymore. Okay. So um, first things first is website, coloresforearth.com. If you have purchased our glass products, whether the enamels, uh, the color concentrates, if you are working on glass and you've purchased any of those products, we have a closed Facebook group that we talk about only Colors for Earth products. CFE Glass Color Artist. Ask to join. It gives you, I think there's three questions. You need to answer the questions if you want to get in the group. Okay. Hey, Deb Gardner. Hi, Diane. Um, also, if you're not, if you're watching from Facebook, um, YouTube, you can do a search on my name. You'll see the Colors for Earth logo. Be sure and subscribe and click on the bell to get reminders when we are going live or have gone live. Hey, Diane Miller from Joplin, Missouri. I'm coming through there tomorrow. Uh, I'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anytime you buy products, we try to put the flyers in there about the products that you're purchasing. So um, this is an old one. It doesn't have the pink on it. But anyway, it gives you basic general instructions. There are other designer videos. If you're familiar with a uh, playlist out on YouTube, you can... Uh, search within my channel and just find the designer ones and it'll take you to all of those videos and then you can watch those. Okay. Hey, Den, thanks for joining. Um, you know, we have the regular enamels. What we're working with tonight is a non-enamel, but we do have uh, the other enamels. We have the paste, the sparkles, and then we have um, the bubble, the glitz. So we've got quite a few different products out there for you and we have a lot of videos 
um, whether they were lives or uh, just videos that I've uploaded. The color concentrates, one of the things, if you happen to be a clay person and you're on here, um, the concentrates, we brought them into the glass world and we called them CC enhancers because I've had a couple of people ask me when they get their product, they bought kit number one, kit number two, and they said, I think I got the wrong product. We just came up with these kits for the glass community. And then we started using them for uh, the ceramic and the pottery community too. So they do say CC enhancer, it's the same product. The product numbers are what you're looking for, which is CC and then a 100 number, okay? So they are the same product. They're used on both uh, glass and ceramics and pottery. All right, okie doke. Okay, so look at this. This is the piece that I just posted, I think an hour ago. Okay, this is a six by 12. Is that pretty awesome? Okay, I gotta, I gotta move slow when I do this. Okay, so instead of using your glass medium with your designers, the designers come in um, half ounce or one ounce in a bag, and then you normally would mix them with the glass medium, the GM 300. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken some of the colors out. I've got the teal, the purple, the dark green. I've got yellow and a little bit of dark green and then yellow by itself and pink. And then I have some black uh, for the line work that I've done. So instead of working with the glass medium, I'm gonna put that away. We are actually, and of course I opened this, working with alcohol. So here, uh, Jenny, was it a couple of months ago, uh, Maria Lunger was doing a presentation for one of the glass groups and she was calling it, you know, it's an alcohol ink type technique, which it is. If you look at this and you go to the uh, non-fired alcohol inks, it's a similar look. Um, she did not use our products, but she said, I can't make your products work. So what did that do for me? I said, okay, I'm going to show you that they will work. So it made me start playing and um, coming up with this. So this was my first one that I did. And it's just a smaller version of this large one here. Okay. A little bit different. Uh, I think I used uh, some of the deep cranberry in this one. Uh, I'm going to use just the colors I told you about earlier. Okay. So now I, when I do this, I put it on white glass because the colors pop on white. Okay. And they have to be capped. So the designers are a non enamel and they have to be capped. Capped means you have to put a piece of clear over the top or you have to sift with clear powdered frit over the top. Because if you put your design on and you fire it, once the binder, the binder is our alcohol this time, if you were using the glass medium, that would be your binder. Once that fires away at a low temp, like around eight, 900, all you've got is powdered product, which is what you've got over here. There's nothing to bind it to the glass. So they have to, because you can literally wipe it off if you did not put anything over it and you fired it. Okay, so you got to be really careful with that. Cliff and Kim Walker, I found the YouTube spot. All right, thanks for joining. Hey, Elizabeth. Um, so they have to be capped on the first firing. That's the biggest thing that I can say. Um, if you don't, it's going to wipe off. So remember that. Um, I've got some little pipettes here, and I'm going to use that to get some of the alcohol. And then I'm just going to uh, move this over so you can see. I'm just going to hydrate it basically with the alcohol. So that is my carrier. So the reason I put a green and a yellow together is because you can mix two colors to achieve another color. So I wanted a, another shade of green. Now I could have had these all mixed up, but I wanted you, you learn more when you see everything done. Okay. And then you need to take your tool and you need to mix these up. And you can see that 
it starts to hydrate. But you also need to make sure, and this is really thick, so I need more alcohol. And I'm going to kind of just squish it. Technically, I should put it out on glass. But because I'm using a pipette, it's easier in these little wells. It just makes it more convenient to get some of it in the pipette. Okay. Any questions, Jenny? Hi, Andrea. Nothing? Okay. All right. So we are talking about designers, which is a non-enamel on glass. When you use your metal tool to stir those up, make sure you clean the sides and the tip because it'll keep that product on those little tiny edges. You don't realize that it's there and you're going to transfer it to your next color. Okay. So I'm just trying to pull it against the side to make sure all the granules are mixed. Um, you can also use a brush to mix with. Okay. So anyway, Tony had, uh, Maria had done this. And um, when I showed her what I did, I think it took me 20 minutes to do that one. She's like, what? And uh, I never went back and showed you guys the information. So that's what I'm doing tonight. Okay. So if you were at the glass show, thanks for being there. Uh, we enjoyed seeing everybody and uh, hopefully next year it'll be larger and back to more normal. Jenny was out there. If you uh, came by the booth, you got to meet her in person. Okay, so Elizabeth wants to know if you can use any glass tile. Um, to mix on Elizabeth or to paint on. So what I've got is a piece of fusible glass because I don't remember if you are a glass or a clay person. So you'll have to tell me, be more specific. Um, so I have, mine is 96 COE and both the white and the clear have to be the same COE or they will fracture or crack in the firing. Okay. Paint. Can you use, okay, for the paint. Yeah, you could use anything. A piece of old window glass if you wanted to mix on the glass. Absolutely. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that the two pieces or the powdered frit uh, is the same COE of what you're using. Okay. We have another question. Uh-huh. Okay, so Deb wants to know, could we, I'm going to move my clear out of the way for a minute. Uh, could we use this technique on a already fired glaze is what she's asking. Um, technically, it should work. It would have to be something flat, Deb. Um, I haven't tried it, okay? But if you think about it, your, your glass is completely vitreous, meaning nothing can absorb into it. Uh, your fired glaze is the same way. Nothing's going to, you know, be able to get inside of it. So it, it is glass. It's just a, a different uh, formulation of it. So yes, as long as it's a flat piece, it should work fine. Now you need to clean, which I did ahead of time. I cleaned my glass with white distilled vinegar. That tends to work better with our products. We used to use alcohol. Um, and we started getting some smearing. So the white distilled vinegar uh, is my preference. And it doesn't really matter. I'm using 99% isopropyl alcohol. Um, there's other percentages. You may get a little di difference in the application, but I don't think it's gonna be enough for this particular technique uh, to make a difference, okay? Um, I'm gonna use my favorite marker that Statler Tri Plus fine liner to sketch on what I want to do here. So I've got a large version of the vase. This is a six by twelve. This is just a little four by four and a half, something like that. Okay. Let's see if you can see that. Okay. Um and I know somebody's gonna ask or am I gonna provide the pattern and um I can sketch one out. Yes. How would you cap a finished glaze 
clay tile. Deb, you, you won't be able to apply this particular product to, yeah. And okay, I just thought about what you're saying. Okay, so you cannot put the designers on clay and then fire them because of the fact they need to be covered. But I'm working on some techniques for you for clay. Just so hang loose and let me uh, work on that a little bit more. Uh, capping would be, you would have to be able to either sift glass over it or maybe put my clear glaze over it. But then that brings in a whole nother issue with you guys and your mid-range clay. So um, just hang tight. Let me do some more research. And I am going to come up with a technique for you guys using these products on ceramics. Okay. Hey, Lucy. All right. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just quickly. So I've got, you know, three large flowers. I got a little bud here. I got another bud here. So when you're doing design, you want to try to do odd numbers. So my bud is an odd number. And yes, you know, that may three, four, five. That's my odd triangle of design. However, you want to look at that. So I'm going to do my vase and just come down with the marker. And if you wanted a tabletop, you know, you can have a top here. And then assuming that this, you know, we may not like a mine here. I didn't see the top of it. You won't when you get everything on there. Okay. And of course, these flowers are not going to be as large as the ones on my big base. Okay, so here's your triangle of design. And then if you want to have a little bud hanging here. So if this is your center, and we've talked about this in other videos, everybody remember you can do a Y and then divide those two large sections. And now you have a perfect five petal flyer. That doesn't mean that's what it's going to look like because we're going to bring it out and create shape with it as we're doing it. Okay. So same thing on all of these and I'll vary the shapes. And when we do the technique, it's going to kind of talk to us and tell us what it wants. Then the rest of the area, if you want to add, you know, where you want to leaf, you can do that. But, I can tell you, I drew them on this piece last night when I painted it. And before I knew it, everything was helter skelter. And I was like, okay, that was a waste of time. But just for a visual aid for you guys, I'm going to put some on here. I'm buffering out, Jenny says. Okay. Meaning my voice or the photo? Yeah. Okay. My signal keeps going different levels. I'm hoping we get a better internet provider soon <laughs> would be my hope. Okay. So, and this one may be completely different than what I did before. Okay. And then, you know, maybe there's leaves in here. This has got a stem and remember you've got stems coming from all of these okay so it's pretty simple to i mean you don't have to know how to draw i mean you've got a basic shape you can make it a straight sided base you don't have to curve it at all okay so that's with the marker now one of the other this piece is done with the enamels so it's more of a um what do we call this jenny monet kind of a look not my favorite, but I'm, this is really loose for Paula to do. This, this is not me <laughs> at all, but I'm trying to get out of my box and try different things.
Okay, so I hopefully will be back up. You'll have to let me know. We had an interruption in service, guys, and I had to reboot. Yeah, you can pop it back in. Okay, all right. So, uh, okay, we should be back. I think Jenny says I'm back. Sorry, I don't know what happened. Um, not good connection tonight. Um, okay, so what I was saying is I'm going to show you how to apply it with a brush. You also need either a straw, and I like these with the bent because then I can aim. I can use the long end to blow from, and then I can aim where I'm going to. Or this is a tool. It's a Tim Holtz tool from the alcohol ink industry in the craft market, and it it blows air. Okay, it's just a like a pillow, and I like this, but I'm going to use both to show you. Okay, all right. So I'm going to show you, then I'm going to wipe it off. What's going to happen? Because if you take the color directly and i'm just going to mix this up i think you can see that and if you set this color down let's say i wanted it right here and i blow it see how it doesn't move it's there and i think i'll zoom in just a little bit whoops maybe too much there we go so it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere it just because what's happening and, and this will help hopefully help you is when you start blowing air on that of any type you start evaporating the alcohol it's gone so it's not going to move um, and that may be uh, some of what when Tony was testing different colors and she was doing it uh, she found that so I'm just going to wipe that off okay now what I found after experimenting is I'm going to put down some alcohol in that area. And I know it's hard for you to see, but there is a puddle of alcohol there. And then you can watch this because it'll start dispersing and you can add that and now watch because now it will flow and move because there's more alcohol there. And you're going to have to ignore the blue lines. Those are going to go away in the firing. Okay. Yes, Lisa, alcohol. Uh, the mixing. I mixed all of the colors, the designers. Okay. So this is the designers, the non-enamel. And I mixed everything with alcohol. I just took my little pipette and got me some alcohol and added it to each color. Okay. So before you do each petal, you need to coat or whatever you're doing coat it with the alcohol and then add a couple of drops let's just go over here and grab some purple also and add it and start blowing so different directions you're going to get you know different sizes it's going to flow different ways depending on which direction you're coming at it with the air does that make sense hopefully and then you're going to have to turn your piece as you're working, or at least I have to. And I'm going to add alcohol there. Same thing. I'm going to add some of the pink. And you could drop this on uh, with a pipette also. Uh, on the larger one, I did, just because it was a larger surface. But see the how it varies? And it's all based upon uh, the pressure of the air, the direction is what you're going to get. Does it matter what percent alcohol? Um, is that what you were going to tell me, Jenny? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I'm trying to look up and see the comments and Jenny's trying to tell me in my ear uh, that people have comments. So I used 99%. Does it matter? I don't think with this particular technique, you're gonna, it's gonna make any difference. So depending on which way. And the other thing I found is like, if I want it to move more, I just put another dot of alcohol on the top of it and that will thin it out also and move it again. Okay. I know it looks a little messy, 
um, which, like I said, I can't believe I'm doing because I don't like messy, but I'm doing it for you guys. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of the purple and I'm using the uh, CFE glass um, class brush. This is the 455. Um, it's just a tack on liner. And Jenny, I think, has the link for that that she's going to put up there. So I'm going to add a little bit more there. Whoops. I just The other thing, and see what's nice is you can just take that off. Um, you can drop, put the alcohol on, and then you can drop color on it, and you get a little bit different, you know, for a totally different. So if I just, it, it will disperse. Let me see if I can bring that and start diffusing. Not sure that you can really see that. Before that alcohol dries, I'm going to grab a little bit more color and get it on there and it can go right off the side so pretty simple to do it just you can see it's like oh my gosh where'd my flower go you no matter what I drew on this one last night I kind of just had to whatever my design took on its own little um, what it wanted to be but, and these, look at that. I did these just minutes ago, and I'm having to stir it up because it had hardened already, okay? So as you're working, just make sure you keep those stirred up because the alcohol is going to evaporate quickly, very quickly. That is so cool. You're so smart. You know what, Dan? I'm, I figured out some fine-tuning, but actually I have to give credit to Maria, Tony Lunger, because she's the one that uh, started this and got me thinking. And then I just kind of took it and run with it. So she gets all the credit. I'm just doing a CFB technique with it. Okay. So you could come back and add more alcohol on top of that. And it will start dispersing and running and moving. It's hard to see, um, but see how, you, and if you want it to go back in, you, you can push it back in. I find this is the best one. Um, it has more power than I do. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but it does. And if you, like, I've got a hard line there. So guess what? I'm just going to kind of tap it into the alcohol because it started to dry. Look at that. So that's much better. This is just marker. The blue is just marker. I'm going to rinse my brush because it starts to dry on there. Any other questions? So Cliff and Kim, you love the designers. Yes, pretty cool. They're fun to do. You just got to remember they have to be capped. So you could draw more lines if you wanted, you know, specific Maybe you wanted something like that. And then when you blow it, it's going to move and we can push it back in. So there's all different types of ways. But see how this is already drying? Let me come just a little bit closer. Maybe. See the difference between the wet? It's kind of, well, wet looking, glossy, and that's dry. You can literally scratch in detail in that if you wanted, uh, which I did on this one a little bit. It's kind of covered up. Um, you just got to know where you're going with it. Beth would like okay, so Elizabeth wants to know what my tool is. This is a Tim Holtz, H-O-L-T-Z, I believe. You can find them at Joann's, any uh, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, Craft Market, online, Amazon. And it's just, they use it for the alcohol inks that they do, the non-fired, okay? But it, it gives you enough pressure, you know, when you squeeze it and blow that it can do it. You just got to be careful you don't overdo it and have it go clean across your uh, page. You know, you could pour alcohol on the complete piece and then just drop colors and move it around, almost like a pour. Um, you could do that even. Now that I've talked, I'm going to have to put more alcohol on here because it starts to evaporate. 
and let's grab some more pink and a little bit of purple and am I rinsing my brush and the alcohol? Uh, no, I'm just rinsing in water and then I blot on a paper towel. So I'm over here to the side rinsing and then I always want to just blot that water out. Uh, the alcohol is just mixed with the colors. Okay. So here's another petal. So I'm just coating it. I know it, you can't see that. Um, you have to trust me. But if you don't put the alcohol down as the carrier on the glass, it's just going to stay. It's, it's not going to move. See, that one's already starting to dry. So I'm going to come back. I want a little bit more movement. And you just got to kind of play with it. And even you can take, put some alcohol down and then take your brush and just kind of tap it a little bit to cut. There we go. And loosen it up. But do you see right there, that little spot right here? That's my air hit first and it pushed all my color off. Now, do I want that there? Mm, not really. So I'm just going to kind of tap. So don't get too close with whatever you're using. You can use the straw and I take the long end for my mouth and the short end because I can turn this and uh, aim it where I want it. Okay. So can you kind of see the flowers coming to shape? Um, we'll put some leaves in here and it, like I said, it may not even be what I drew, but it's a general guideline uh, to keep you kind of focused at least. The gentle brushwork works great too. Yeah, you just have to be, um, Kim said that, or Cliff. Um, I'm not sure if you're both on here or if it's just you, Kim. So yeah, you can just take the brush and move things around if you want. You can pat it and you get that watercolor look. That's perfectly fine also. See how I went to the side with that one? But after you blow it, that first time it starts to evaporate the alcohol and it really makes a huge difference. You may have to go back and add it. Hey, Miss Robin, thanks for joining. You must have got finished with your other event. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit of that on there. Adding some of the purple. Remember the colors are mixed with alcohol this time. And I'm just blowing those around to create my petals. And I'm constantly turning. I'm going to rinse that brush again because it tends to dry on here and it gets kind of chunky, so to speak. And I'm going to add some alcohol to my colors because they dry out really fast. Any other? Leah says she loves it. Awesome. I'm glad you like it. Um, just pretty simple kids. Think about it. The kids could do this. Um, you could have everything mixed and they could take, um, let me grab it, a dropper here. Did I put alcohol on there? I can't see. I'll add more. You could take your, your pipette and I got way too much, but you could use that. Now watch that. I want you to see how it starts to, um, I don't know if you can see it now. It starts to diffuse the alcohol that's there and run, so to speak. It's hard to see on camera. So, and that's already dry. See, very quick. That alcohol definitely doesn't take very long and it's gone. And if I want to come back and maybe tell it to get back inside the fence, didn't want it to go out that far. So I've got one, two, three. I need two more petals in here. We'll see if we can get them in. We'll do the eyedropper again or pipette, however you want to refer to it. So it's it's kind of diffusing into it. And like I said, it's hard to see. Okay. Zoom back out. 
Now, if I want to come back in and just add some purple, I can do that while it's wet. If it's not wet enough, I can just add alcohol on top and now cause that to move. Okay. Remember, you can always take, add a little alcohol and then you can take your brush and you can have it migrate and you can blow it again. You can go back and come in from this direction. All right, so we've got, and you see what's happened? My circles around my flowers have all been pushed out because I have the air and then the alcohol causing it to move. Okay, so we're gonna tap that on, add a little bit of purple. So you could do multiple colors. I'm just keeping it simple for this tonight. Uh, especially this is smaller. I think this is like a, um, I don't know, seven by four and a half, something. I don't know. I just grabbed some scrap glass that I had because I knew we didn't have time to do uh, a large one. So this one that I posted earlier is a six by 12. But do you, and I want to show you, like last night, this was my palette. It's dry, but guess what? I could have used this. You just add the alcohol, stir it up, reconstitute it. But I wanted you to see how I mixed it, so I didn't use that one. So you could have um, a palette that you just leave, you know, whatever you're using, and then you can just reconstitute. Once the alcohol evaporates from these, you could go back and add medium if you wanted to use medium with it uh, on a different piece. Okay, now I've got a couple of petals for a bud here, so we need to do those real quick. And I'm going to do both of those at one time. So, and I should have had this turned around the other way. So I'm just going to add, I'm going to make these a little bit darker. And I'm going to come at it from this direction, and they're going down. And then whatever they end up shaping, I'm going to do that and create the shape with the quill pen and the black for on top of the clear glass. So I've got some little tricks to show you that also. All right, so now we need to come down and do the bud that's laying on the table here. And turn this and maybe oops I'm, yeah you got to be careful I did that last night too with the alcohol it's much thinner and it doesn't take much when you move your brush to it goes everywhere now I didn't get as much movement so I'm going to add more alcohol and I'm going to add more color and do it again. There we go. I'm fuzzy, Jenny says. Okay, let me put my finger here and see if it'll focus. Hopefully. Okay, I'm going to turn that. Now I need to put in my leaves. Okay, I'm going to reconstitute because these have been sitting here. The color is heavier than whatever medium you're using. So we used alcohol to mix the colors with. See how that thickened up? So I've got uh, the dark green, the yellow, and I've got mostly yellow with a little bit of the dark green in here to make another shade. And then this is the teal. Okay. All right. So we've got to come up with some leaves in the middle as a filler. We had some coming up here. So once again, start with your alcohol because all of this is dry. So let's say that I want a leaf up here. I can add a little bit, grab some yellow, and create. And that one I'll probably make two leaves out of because I've got two different points. 
which works for me. Okay. And I had one here, but I think I'm going to go over here. So I'm base coating basically or filling the area with the alcohol as the carrier and then just tap the color or drop the color on and blow on it with either the tool or you can use a straw to create the shapes that you're wanting. I'm going to turn this because I want to work in this area and I want these to go down. Okay, so I'm going to have some here. Try not to do a very large area at a time because it evaporates. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of that teal color even. And I'm going to add another drop of alcohol. And I'm going to start the movement. And it's already dry. So add alcohol. Tap it a little bit. And move it. Let's go this direction also. Isn't that cool? All right, do we have a question? Okay, composition would be tough for me. You're an incredible artist and you can make something out of nothing. Well, and once you do it a couple of times, then it does get easier because um, I wasn't always like that. And I still struggle with this abstract look. I'm adding more alcohol to my colors just because it's evaporating quickly. Um, I can provide you with the pattern and just try it on clear and see what you come up with. So I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow at the tip and let's get some of the dark green here and then quickly get it going. You can also come back and add more alcohol and move that around. Okay, now we've got one down here. So let's coat it. Put a little bit on there. Maybe add a little teal on this one. And you just have to work quickly. I think that's the biggest thing I can stress to you that you need to work pretty fast. But like I said, if you don't like it, oh my gosh, you can just wipe it off. So I'm pushing this kind of back, telling it to get back inside the fence. I didn't want it. And the other good thing is, if you don't like something, you don't like the shape, I'm going to show you how with the Q-tip, I can change it. Because once the alcohol evaporates, it's just dry powder sitting there. I can do whatever I want to it. Um, we need a little one down here by our bud. So let's have one right there. We have a question. Do the colors brighten up on firing? Yes, a little bit. These are, can you see this one here? These are the same colors. So they're not, they're not going to change other than they're not going to be chalky. They're going to be brighter as far as that goes, more glossy looking. Okay. But remember, this is on fused glass. See the finished piece tool. Oh, Lisa's answering for us. Okay. So, yes, they're going to be glossier where they look brighter, I guess you would say. Okay. Because the glass is over them and causing them to gloss. Okay. Um, I want one more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember what? Odd numbers. So I'm going to add a leaf here. So you see what I did? I counted um, so that I knew what I wanted. So I'm just dabbing some of those on, grabbing whatever I want. You can go at it from different directions. And I think I'll leave it like that. All right. So I know that looks like, you know what, right now looks like nothing. <laughs> it's crazy. And, you know, go look at um, what I did. And look, this one is just, um, it's just petals. That's all it is. So you can divide it and then whatever in you create the shape. 
and sometimes I didn't even stay right on the edge of the color. I came out further. So there's so many, you know, be really what I call loosey goosey with it. Um, and I know Den's saying, I can't do that. You can, you can, I promise you, you can once you do it a couple of times. So I just created the shape from what I, and it's, it's harder to do smaller pieces than it is to do the larger piece. I can tell you that for sure. Okay. All right. So now with the liner brush, you can either use that tack on. I tend to like the softer liner, which is the 3600 number two. And always dampen your brush, blot it. So I rinsed it out in my water bowl. And now I'm going to pull these stems in. See how the stems are in here? Okay. And then we can accent those with the black later. So I'm going to add in my hand. I was like, where's my pipette? I'm going to put some alcohol in the middle of my, my alcohol's getting further down. I'm going to have to put some out in a, I'm going to coat my brush with alcohol is what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to grab whichever green you want. You can get a couple of them and we'll just pull those stems in. We're going to have to be imaginary where they're coming from. Remember, there's probably other flowers on the back side also. And make sure that you've got something coming from your leaves. And then down here at the bottom, we have that bud. Okay, so we've got a leaf and then we have a stem here. And I'm not adding any more alcohol to this. I'm kind of just drawing that in. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, still feel like I need another. I'll put a shorter one there. Okay. So those are in. Pretty easy. Now, to do the vase, what we have to do is create the outer edge. And we're going to blow the color inward. You could choose any color. I'm going to choose the teal is what I did on mine. And I'm going to have to tilt this to get more alcohol. I am going to put some alcohol in the middle here. It'll probably evaporate. Okay. And then be ready. Have your blower. And I'm going to turn this sideways because I need to go in from the outer edge. Okay. Also need to have alcohol here. My little pipette is not grabbing enough of it. Okay, it's much better. Grab my teal quickly. I forgot to stir it up and just kind of tap it along the edge. You can kind of come in here and there. Now watch this. And I'm going to clean up the outer edge with my shaper tools. And I'll explain that when we get to it. But isn't that cool? So this is what's giving you that variegated look. It's almost like I had swiped the color across. But this is what I did. I used the same technique. Okay. Then we have the bottom. So we'll add just a little more alcohol down here. A little bit of color. So what do you guys think? You think you might want to try something like this? Do you like it? Is it too abstract? I need some feedback. Will this be on YouTube later? Yes, yes. It's being recorded to YouTube also at the same time. Nancy. Well, hey, Miss Donna Dewberry. Now I'm really nervous. <laughs> One of my mentors is on. How are you? <laughs> so this is on glass, Miss Donna. And it's like the alcohol ink type technique, but it's using my designer products. Okay, so I'm, I'm applying the alcohol with a dropper. And then I'm adding color and I'm dispersing it with the blow tool. So whether you use a straw to blow with or the Tim Holtz 
I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit here so that I can get a bigger variation. Isn't that cool? Now, we're going to have to let it dry for just a second. And then we have, I've got a couple of these here, what's called shaper tools. Well, actually, here's the other ones. Okay, and Jenny's going to pop up the link. And while this is drying for just a minute, I'm going to uh, show, this is the designer kit. It's on sale. That is the sale price. There's 16 colors. And like I said, uh, the sampler comes in the half ounce bags. And we do have uh, one ounce. A lot of people will buy the black and the white in the one ounce. But there is the link for that. Okay. All right. So the shapers um, are different tips. And I don't know if you can see. You've got rounded. You've got some that has a little bit of an arc. You've got points. And then this one's kind of tapered off to one side. So there may be a reason why you want to use one versus the other. I like uh, this one, it's the number two. And as this starts to dry, I can actually, and it's not quite dry enough there. Let me see if I can do the bottom here. You can come in and basically, hence the word shaper tools, you can shape that line. Let's see if I can. So it's just a silicone rubber tip and you can clean it up. Remember, all of this is just marker. It's going away. Remember how, and you can you can sit there and take it off if you want with a Q-tip, but it's gonna burn out. You don't need to do that, okay? It just looks really um, odd being on there. Any other questions, Jenny? I love to try this. Not sure I should start another <laughs> another project. I understand. <laughs> There's a lot of us like that. I don't know what I got there. Okay. So I'm using these pointed Q-tips. They're like makeup Q-tips. I probably got them on Amazon. I, I love Amazon. Uh, they're quick. And so you don't have to have that, but you could use it. You can use the Q-tip and just come in here and shape the edge of that vase. See how I did that? The shaper tips are a, it's like a silicone. They're very, they're bendable, okay? Um, we also have the, and I don't know that I have it out here. It's, um, it's another wipeout tool, Jenny, that RD44, wasn't it, is the number? It looks like a little um, chocolate chip. We have those on the website also. You can use those. But do you see how I just shaped that? And you can come up here and you can remove more of that. You could use the Q-tip and get that off of your um, petal, okay? But look at how that just fixed it. Yes, that, yeah, that's it, RD66, you got it. Jenny's gonna pop up another link for you. So. If you wanted, like I had a couple of spots here where my green kind of speckled. If you want to get rid of it or if you wanted to shape something specifically, you can take your Q-tip and you can wipe that off and get rid of that excess. So can you see how I shaped it? This is just blue marker. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay. All right, so the other thing that I did with the shaper is um, I came in and kind of created what we call like a highlight or a glare on the vase. Um, with acrylics, we would do it white. Well, I have a white. There's Sometimes there's a reason I use the particular colors that I use. So the white glass is going to come through when I do that. Now, you could do that with a toothpick. You could do it with the, the pointed Q-tips. Um, or you can use the shaper, okay? So this is the one that just comes to like a flat edge. And I can come in here and literally just remove some excess color. And looky there, you got Okay, I think I'm moving too fast. Jenny says I'm getting fuzzy. So I'm going to just use the corner. And I can just drag it across. 
if I wanted to use the Q-tip, whoops, you can do it also. Okay, so there's different ways to achieve, and I just took and blew off the excess because that's just dry color, okay? Now, we need centers of our flowers. Um, you could make them yellow if you want. I would wanted the black on mine because I was outlining with black, and I just felt that would be uh, better, okay? The little specks you see on here, I'll, I'm going to show you how I do that too. Oh, I didn't put my tabletop in. Uh, so on this one, I did purple. So let's grab some more alcohol and the brush. All right, green in there. All right, so actually I may put pink down here on this one because of the fact that I've already got, I've got the purple flower there. So I'm just going to add some alcohol and grab some of this color. And I said I was going to grab pink and I just picked up purple. So again, and this you can see how you can just, just create just an illusion. And I'm just brushing this into the alcohol, which is kind of diffusing the colors. Remember this blue is just marker. It's nothing. I'm just trying to wipe it out of there so you don't see it. Okay, and maybe a little bit in here. If you wanted to use the blower, you can, you know, blow it around to kind of diffuse it even more. So even if you didn't have a blower, you could put the alcohol down and just do what I just did and just gently move that color around inside the alcohol. Okay. And you get that. All right, so now I'm going to go to black. Any other questions? I like it without the tabletop. Okay, well, my flower is laying on the tabletop. That's the reason I put that in. Um, put a little more green there. I think my stem went away. But yeah, my neighbors thought I should join an Amazon anonymous group. Oh, mine probably do too, Vicki. <laughs> it used to be worse than it is now, but yes. I agree. Okay, so this is just the designer black. I have mixed it up. This is in my little um, ink jars that we carry. If you search on ink, you can buy them singly or you can buy them in a six pack. Um, you still need alcohol to create the diffusion. Oops, and I dropped it on there. So I'm going to add it here. I'm going to do one at a time. Just grab and I mix this up right before we went live. Hopefully it'll drop on there. I think I need to mix it again. It tends after it's set for a little bit, sometimes it can get jelly, so to speak. This one is mixed with my glass medium because I use it uh, with the quill. Okay, see how that one's not moving? I'm going to have to get over the top of it. And I'm going to add another Can you do this technique on clear? What Nancy wants to know. Absolutely. You can do it on any color you want. I, if you know me, I just tend to work a lot on, uh, look at that, how it's sticking to my brush. Okay. I'm going to have to mix this. It's not wanting to move, which is fine, but let's give it a good stir. And I'm going to add a little bit more of the GM 300, the glass medium. Stir that up. And I'm just using our tool. All right, so let's go back up here. I'm gonna, I touched it with the alcohol and then I'm just gonna kind of move around what's there. Wow, that one's just not wanting to move at all. It's going to prove me wrong, isn't it? Uh, 
Okay, so this one I had mixed with the glass medium, the black, because I find it, um, well, it's easier to use the quilt pen with, first of all, and the alcohol would evaporate too quickly. Um, could you do it for the centers? Absolutely. Um, you can put it out here. Um, here, we'll do this one. This from last night. Remember I told you I have this one. So I'll add some alcohol in there, mix it up, and it's going to definitely diffuse. You can see it running more than the other. And actually, I think that's exactly what I did last night. I did not write my process down, but I can. I just wing it. If it works, great. All right, the more alcohol. And so I'm just gonna move that around a little bit. Um, you know what, because I grabbed the wrong one. That's exactly what I did. I grabbed it out of the jar instead. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a couple of more dots to make it a little bit stronger in the middle because we're going to come back with our quill pen and create the shape and the detail of it okay any other questions nancy with the light board you can see yeah with the light board underneath here which when i'm doing my regular enamels i do that and you can see a pattern through it so yeah so remember all this blue you're seeing is just that marker that i drew my design on with okay just with that statler tri plus fine liner it'll burn away in the kiln now one thing that you have to before i forget while these are drying you cannot let the designers go all the way out to the edge your glass will not seal so you have to remove a small amount of it. So that's why these um, pointed Q-tips are great. I clean the sides first from any color that went over the edge, okay? And then tilt it. And I want you just to kind of seesaw it back and forth, wipe it on your paper towel, turn your Q-tip over, do you see that very, very fine edge? I think you can see it now that I have my hand under there. You've got a thin, thin, like a six, probably a 32nd of an inch from the color out to the white edge. See that fine, fine line? So you need that all the way around. That is just enough to allow the glass to fuse together. If it's not taken off, if you don't remove that, then it's going to get rough at that area and it will not completely seal to the top and the bottom piece okay so just back and forth and you can see that very very tiny edge okay and paula forgot to remove her marker i'll have to that'll burn off but anyway okay so we've got that on there. I think I like um, the leaves. You will have to kind of just, it, when you start using the quill, it it starts to come together. So is this dry? I'm tilting it so I can make sure that black is dry. And it looks like it is. Now, the tricky part is you have to put the clear glass, and I don't want that there, over the top. Now, you're going to have to remove this when you get to the kiln because you need to sift clear powdered frit in layers because you've got just dried color. This is the colorant that we put in other things. So there's no glass in this, nothing to bind it. So you need to sift the clear powdered frit between. And then I, I go all over generously. And I took some pictures of this. And I will make up a PDF and put it on uh, the blog so that you have that to look at. It's You will barely be able to see your color through the sifting. Okay. That's the first thing. How long does it take to dry before I can cap it? Well, it was dry. That was what, maybe 
two minutes, three minutes, that alcohol evaporates lickety split. Okay, so guess what you're going to have to do because you don't have a pattern of this because it changed. So you're going to have to take, this is the tricky part, some painter's tape. And you want to not try to scratch the glass underneath. You don't want it to move your color. Grab my other one. So wherever you don't have color that's coming out that you need to be able to see. So now I can see where my lines need to go. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Oh, Jenny says it does to her. Okay, that's all that matters. No, <laughs> that's not all that matters. <laughs> okay, quill pen. Jenny's going to throw up a link. We have, um, I think our handles are a different color now, but it comes with two different tips. This is the 512, the larger tip. The tips have like an oval. You can see it right there. Your color needs to be up inside that so that it can act as a well. So once I load the color, when I touch to the glass, you see the tongs, how they open up on the end. So you have to touch down with a little pressure, open that up, and then you can come back up and start. So what that does is say, okay, this is where I want. Okay, she said I was out of focus. Is the clear slightly bigger? I did on this piece, Den, um, he's asking if the clear, it is a little bit bigger. So yeah, you would just have to, um, this piece was exactly the same. Uh, typically we, we do the tops a little bit larger. I just happen to have this one cut uh, from past. So when you're touching down to start the flow, you open those tongs. I think you can see that. And then you release and you start writing. I have no color on here. I just trying to explain that you wanna open those up and then start. So that's gonna start the flow, okay? All right, so make sure that I'm going to add a little bit more medium to my black and remix it so that it's uh, nice and thin. And sometimes you got to thin it more and more. You know, you just got to find a good consistency. Okay, so I'm going to, and these little jars, that's why we call them the ink jars. Um, it's nice because it's, uh, shallow and allows you to dip in and get that. Okay, can you see that? See the black on there? Okay. All right, so I'm going to dip it again and I like to drag off the edge. And then let's just do this leaf down here. Start it. Yes. Okay. All right. So Jenny said to move that one out of the way. It was trying to possibly focus on uh, too many different things. Oh, you want me to zoom in? I'm really fuzzy. I think it's the signal. Okay. Can you see that? Good. I think that's better is the black enamel it's getting better um uh, leah the black is the designer these are all designers okay the dz uh 201 is that number the pen ink says use the color concentrates you can use either one you could but if you have the designers and you want to keep it all with just that product you can. If you use the color concentrate, you can use that. And you would do the same principle. You still need to sift over the top of it um, if you want it to be food safe on the concentrates. Okay. Yeah, the designer black is stronger um, because the CC black, and what she's asking about is 
the color concentrate black is for our ceramics it is in a different base so it's not as strong this is pure color mixed just with the medium so it's going to be all of these designers are more intense than the concentrates will ever be so it just depends on what you have and what you want to use that brings up a point you might be able to uh, use the alcohol just like i did putting it down first add the concentrates on top and diffuse it may have somebody may have to try that Okay, so Leah brought up a great point. So because I'm using the designers on the top of the clear, I will have to sift clear powder over the top of this to make it glossy. Otherwise, it'll just wipe off after I fire. Correct. Very good. I'm impressed. Okay, so let's pull a stem in here. Okay, so Deb wants to know, why am I doing these lines on top of the clear glass and not on top of the color? Can anybody tell me? Does anybody know the answer to that? What happens when I take a quill pen, I start scratching that color? It's just dried color on there now. So I would scratch it. It's going to clog the tip because it's dry. This is wet. I'm not going to get the flow that I can get just on directly on the glass. But that's a great question. Thanks for asking it. Yeah, scratch the color off. And you're right, you get depth. Okay. okay. So can you see? You can see that the lines are on the top, the colors underneath, and you get that real fuzzy she said okay hold on let's let it focus i think it's my signal is that any better so you you would get you get the depth by putting it on top is the difference okay so i've got this leaf that's laying here and I'm, you see, I'm constantly reloading. It's not like you can go a long distance. Okay. It's a blur. Okay, so let me... I don't think it's the camera. I think it's the signal, Jenny. And I'm not sure why. I apologize, guys. Hopefully... Um, Hopefully we get spectrum internet soon here. I'm crossing my fingers. So I'm using what I did with the colors underneath to tell me where my petals, where my leaves, and you can, you know, create any type of an outline depending on what your style is. And I've got some little green calyx here, which I didn't have on my other one. So you see how quick that went in? Now, while I'm down here, um, I'm going to pull in that tabletop. I'm also going to connect this and run that across the bottom. So do you like the technique? Paula, your lens may be a little... No, I think, Kim, I think it's the connection because it's like just went down as soon as I looked up. I don't think... I, I never touch my lens, so um, I know it's not that. I think it's the internet connection, and I'm not sure why because it's not like we're having bad weather or anything. Is it still fuzzy, Jenny? It, looks like the signal is she says it's really bad um do you want me to try to refresh i may lose connection okay 
Okay, I'm going to keep going. I know that the signal may be a little fuzzy. So I'm just adding some things in here for the illusion. Yes, what? You want me to refresh? Oh, no, it's gone. Oh, sorry. I think it was going back up. I don't know whether to refresh the whole video or not. You kind of get the idea, okay? Um, and remember, this is, and I just made a mess, didn't I? Make sure you don't have it on your hands. There we go. The signal should be better. Yay. Hey, hey. All right. So this I'm going to make probably into, I'm trying to, I'm kind of visually looking at it with my pen thinking, hmm, how's it going to go? I've got a couple of, I think I'll do two leaves here. I think that's what I originally. Yeah. So because of the internet connection, uh, we're going to go ahead and draw for the giveaways tonight. Uh, so Jenny's going to spin the comments and we're going to give away a free downloadable pattern pack worth $14.50 or left, less. You'll have to go out there and pick out which one you want. Could be ceramic or glass. All right, so Jenny's going to do that, and I'll tell you who she picks. Lisa Fairbank. You have won a free downloadable technique. You'll need to go find that. Uh, either copy the link and message me, and if I don't have your address, be sure and send me an instant message with your shipping address and your email so that I can send you tracking. I am going to accent these um, stems. It doesn't have to be the whole length of that. It's just you're creating an illusion. Okay, the next uh, prize is a quill pen set. And Jenny's going to draw for that one while well, I'm see how I'm just pulling some lines in to create more shape all right Jenny Kim and Cliff Walker quill pen all right Now, if something happens and you already have one, you know, we can uh, do something different if we need to. I'm making a big mess. Okay. So you get the idea. Now, let me do one big flower um, just so that you can see that. So we, we need five petals. So I know that and I've got to hold this because it's loose. Um, there's one here. And Kim and Cliff, I have your address, so I don't need that. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if you need to do that, you can kind of just give you a visual. And then you just start shaping that. From the center. Uh, we'll do another packet, uh, another free downloadable 1450 or less value. And then I'm going to pull some lines from the center. The faster you go, the thinner the line will be, but you do have to get it started. See there, I ran out. So Jenny's going to spin one more time. Now this one's got another petal up here, so I'm going to come up here and do this petal first because I can see it in my mind. All right, Jenny, do you have a winner?
Deb Gardner, you are the next winner. So you can pick out a downloadable, well, it could be any technique sheet. I'll send you a PDF, in other words, um, of your choice. It could be glass or it can be ceramic. Okay, so see how I, I determined that one was on top based upon the flow of my color. So those are the things that, yeah, you'll have to stop and think about. And if you need help, just reach out, send me a picture. I'd be happy to help out. All right. I'm going to do a little petal here. So I can keep going. So um, you need to remove the top glass when you're done and sift. Sift. Okay. She said the picture is better. So my signal must be a little. Uh, I just seen it go back. As soon as you say that, then I look up and it goes back to yellow instead of green. Jenny is jinxing me. That's what she's doing. But what do you think? I mean, it's really pretty cool. Of course, then you've got all these leaves. And I try to work from one side across so that I'm not laying my hand in it. Um, like I said, start with just a flower. You don't have to have anything else on it. Just simple, easy peasy. If you use the alcohol as your liquefier for the enamels, they are extremely chalky and thick and gooey. I don't like this as much, but it would be the same principle. Add the alcohol in the area first, add the mix of your color or alcohol down, and then again, blow it or dab it into it. Um, the little black specks that you see are just fine glass frit. So I'm going to move this over and I'll bring this one down. So the last thing I do after I've powdered over the top of this, because remember it's designers or if it's color concentrates, you have to put clear powdered frit over it. And then I usually put me a little bit out. So it's extremely fine fine for it and I just grab some and I sprinkle it in the middle maybe it'll be easier how about if I turn this over I would sprinkle it like in the middle of my flower and then I just kind of lay a little bit of it around the rest of the piece so it's like pepper to give it more of an organic type of a look yes Jenny mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the designers are on sale, okay, and we have, have that link of the paper towel to put over this. Um, I have to make a trip out of town in the morning, so if you order tonight or the rest of the week, it may not be shipped until Monday. I should be back Saturday. Um, I have to, I'm going to make a quick trip to Missouri, <laughs> St. Louis, Missouri, quick, 12 hours, one way. I don't know if it's quick. It'll be a short trip <laughs> anyway. And you know what? Tomorrow night I may be doing Raku with a group uh, and I may go live while we're doing that. That'll be fun. That'll be something different. So, okay. So see, I just continue around. So if you won tonight, be sure and message me what you uh, want as your download with your address if I don't have that. Email, so I have the shipping. I can send you the tracking. Okay, so let's look at this bud over here. So this guy, I'm going to come here. And, you know, just be real loose with your outline. That way you don't have to be perfect. That's what I say. If you give it a wiggly line, then that one that, instead of trying to make them all straight, if you make them uneven, then it's going to be easier on you. Less headache. Okay. Well, I hope you like the technique. Um, yeah, Deb's a sweet raccoon. I knew you would jump on that one. Um, 
I'm actually headed up to the lady that I purchased the company from back in 2006. Her, um, she passed away three months ago and her son, there's some things that I need to go get. And then they used to do Raku. Um, so he says, we need a quick lesson. <laughs> I'm like, okay, not a problem. So that's, and then they want lessons on how to fire for glass also. And then I have to deliver a kiln and then I'm going to my mother's. So I will be back home Saturday. Okay, so see how that leaf came to life? Pretty cool. All right, Den Larson, I want to see you do this. I want to see some uh, creations out of you. I think you would have a blast with this. I'm going to go. <laughs> no. Okay, we've been an hour and a half, Jenny says. So I'm going to sign off. And uh, I'm going to let Jenny sign off. I may sit here and still do this. If any of you want to see me finish it, it's totally up to you. Otherwise, I'll post a picture later. So comment if you're going to stay on with me. But I am going to let Jenny go. She's had a long day. And she graciously is uh, donating her time. So any last questions before we go? See how I created that one? And now I'm going to I'm gonna actually make two more in here. I'm going to make one here. Yes, Jenny. Um, so to find the different techniques that are, go to the blue bar at the top of the website and under the education tab, you should be able to find, um, oh Lordy, that's terrible. I'm trying to let me do a visual on myself. So under education, and then you've got learn here is what it's called. And then there's technique projects and there's downloadable ones, but you can do any of them and I can send you the PDF. So it doesn't matter if it's in the downloadables or not. It doesn't have to be. Okay. So enter the learn here, or you can just do a search. Say you like pansies, you can do a search, you know, or any particular subject and it would bring up anything. All right, so are they going to stay on with me, Jenny, while you leave? Or what's their, did anybody say? I'll be here for a bit. <laughs> okay, Kim. <laughs> hey, Shannon Johnson. All right, yeah, I can't wait. You got to get Mr. Den on it. He, he needs to do this, right? Okay, so I need another pedal here. So, Jenny, thank you. Uh, you're relieved <laughs> if you want to sign off. And I will just go back and answer questions uh, after the broadcast if I need to. Okay. And then we'll, we'll be on next Tuesday and we'll do ceramics. I've got um, a couple of pieces prepped today for some carving. So I'm anxious to do that when I get back in town. See, I'm just going to pull lines out. Thank you, Jenny. Um, so Okay, she's leaving us. So if you have questions, I'll have to just look up and then you'll, I may have to answer them later. Okay, guys. You're just pulling lines out from the center. And when I drop that black in there, and when I take this off, I'll show you what it looks like without the color. Okay. So let's see. We've got another petal like here. But I, I hope you'll give this a try. I mean, like I said, even if it's just a flower, you don't have to get real um, detailed like I did. But you guys know me. I tend to go overboard with most everything I do. Right? Thanks, Wendy. I'm glad you like it. So you just got to keep dipping into your designer. And remember, this one I have mixed with the glass medium because it's going to stay open longer. It's not going to evaporate like the alcohol did for the color technique. Okay, so 
that's the reason I changed what I was doing. So usually there's a method to my madness. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to kind of doodle and keep going. If you want to stay on, you can. Like I said, I'll post a picture later. But I hope you like it. And I'll show you that large one again. And let me zoom back out. Okay. So you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see the depth when you, it's hard to see. But I just kind of sprinkled some more black, the frit in the middle. And then you can see all the little specks in the background. It looks like I've splattered it, which you could do. But at least the frit you could dump off if you needed to. Um, well, you can't do it. You can't dump it off on that one because you've got clear powder over the top of this. And then you're adding the little flecks of the black top of that. So you would have to make a decision whether you wanted them on there or not. And you kind of just have to, um, you can still see your design enough that you'll know where to put everything. So if you joined late, these are the designers and you want to make sure that you've cleaned the edge of the glass where the designer does not go all the way out to the edge because it doesn't have a place to seal. So I've taken a Q-tip and I just ran it along the edge of the glass, the white glass, to remove any color that was on that very edge. And you can go back to the beginning of the uh, video and see how I did that. All right. So is the fine for it to give it that splattered paint look? Yes, Deb. Yeah. So this is just fine glass frit. Um, you know, for the ceramic people, you could just splatter it. Um, I'm sure you guys know how to splatter with a toothbrush, that type of thing. Uh, but if you add frit to your pottery, it's, and you guys are going extremely hot. So it's going to be, you'll be able to see more of a speck and not a blob on ceramic, meaning 0406. But when you're going to cone six and five, or hotter, it's going to just melt and run more. Okay, so keep that in mind. And it's just some experimentation. Uh, we have uh, thin black crystals that are little tiny specks like this that you could add. Uh, they will go to a high fire also. So think about that. Sometimes you just got to change uh, based, change the products based upon the medium that you're working in. Okay. Now, I will not fire this till I get back. So it'll be Saturday or Sunday before I fire this. But I will post it. So I'm doing a pedal now. Constantly re-dipping. See how I go in? I'm kind of pulling some of those details. It gives more of a ruffled or textured look to that petal. More character. So you see how I start? You get it flowing and then pull. So I'm slower at the start. And you want short and long. You don't want them all the same length. need to make it interesting um you know you could do this with a brush if you don't have a quill pen absolutely you can do it it's not going to be as strong a black because thinning it out to get fine lines it definitely could be done for sure i mean i can doodle all day all that on my little cards that I did the other day. I was just sitting there watching and decided to. Actually, I had those when I was in Vegas. I started that. 
but it's kind of fun to do stuff like that. And then you can give it away and surprise somebody and they've got a little keepsake. And you could do small ones of these and attach it to a card. Uh, you could use thin uh, glass, two millimeter white and clear and make it thin. You can make little magnets. I mean, there's all different things you can do. All right. Are you hanging on, guys? We're losing people. <laughs> I'm almost done. You can sign with uh, the quill also. Trying to get, I'm trying to get it on this very edge, and it makes it hard to get a nice fine line. And I see that I forgot some of these lines on another petal. up here on this one and see that tape also gives you a place to hold on to your piece so it doesn't move um you know you could put i just thought of it you could put that um no slip grip you know the rubber stuff we use in our kitchen cabinets you could put that underneath and just turn it and that would help hold the bottom glass it's not going to help you with your top glass but it is another tool. I mean, there's so many things that we can use. All right. I think I am done. So when we started, you were probably thinking, oh, I don't know about that. But look at that. What do you think? I'm going to put a couple line there and there. And I got outside, so I'm just going to take my Q-tip to clean it up. And then I need to sign it. So I think I'll sign over here. And you know what? Next time we do glass, how about I give this one away? What do you think about that? since I've got the big one. All right. And then I'm going to take this off and show you and I'll put my year up here. That's I love the quill pen for signature. All right, let's double check to make sure we have I don't need, um, this is kind of coming out from behind, so I don't need um, any detail lines. The back of the petals wouldn't have that. All right, so are you ready? I'm going to turn this and move this over. And looky there. So technically, you could take a screenshot of this and create self a pattern if you wanted to so when i go to the kiln i will sift clear powdered frit over this it'll and i'll post pictures of it it's almost you can't even tell you can kind of see color underneath it but it's pretty heavy then i go one more time around the edge that helps lift the edges up allows all the alcohol the organic stuff to burn out because these are non-enamels and it helps eliminate bubbles, okay? You're gonna get a couple of places where you might see a little bit of a bubble, but for the most part, I did pretty good. And I'll also post the firing schedule also with that, okay? So sift it, then you're gonna set that piece back on top, okay? And then you're gonna sift it again because that black, is the designer it's on top what's going to happen if you fire it and you don't it'll wipe right off so you have to sift over it to keep it on there and especially if it was going on something that's going to be food safe uh, makes it food safe like a dish or something like that so anyway there we go guys i'm going to sign off um let me
switch back over here. All right, I'm back. <laughs> I'm going to hide that. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell so you get notifications. Uh, like, share, and uh, I'd love to see what you do. And post, tag me, and I will post pictures of this later. And I'll also post the link to the blog for you. Okay. You're welcome, Deb. Good night. All right, guys. Good night. I got to get up early in the morning. <laughs> See you later.